Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey and today it's not really a comic video, um, not at all actually, but uh, nevertheless a video that I've wanted to make for a long long time um, to show you my art books as in fine art, not the sheet picture trash with the words in it that we usually care for, no it's a real high art on a pedestal. Um, yeah, I as a young dude, I've bought dozens and dozens of books about art, art catalogues, uh, exhibition catalogues, and stuff like this. And to make it even worse, my wife and her family, they have a lot of stuff as well. Even though, honestly, most of the stuff here behind me is uh, from me. And it took a while until we found this shelf here. Actually, in this house, we bought nothing new, <laughs> but rearranged it a bit, and I'm totally happy with the stuff here from there. It's crazy. So don't expect me to do really an overview about the stuff here, but just to give you an impression about the sheer amount of stuff. It's a bit like the internet uh, printed out, and I really wonder if when I would be at the same age, my late, uh, early, late tens or early twenties, that was the time when I bought the most of it. Um, if I would do it again, I mean, I have this other craziness with the comics going, so probably not, um, especially today, it's so easy to type in uh, whatever your artist you, you want or you're interested in and you get results. Not so back in the day and uh, when you want to uh, see stuff from Scheim, Heim Sutein or Sutin, however he's pronounced, uh, some kind of like this uh, collected edition here in a slipcase uh, by Taschen was fantastic or one of my first loves uh, in terms of um, fine art oh this is a bit dirty here um, is Alexei Yavlensky. He lived uh, for a long time in a town called Wiesbaden in which I went to school. Um, he's very famous for this stuff here, these meditation meditative faces but he was uh, yeah, German Expressionist. And a um, lot of the stuff here is German Expressionism. We have Kandinsky down below. <laughs> and here's Rembrandt. Uh, actually, this order here makes no sense at all. Put them here side aside. Paul Gauguin, Vincent van Gogh. Beautiful catalog, by the way. Um, but I, I actually had to consider the si different sizes of the books. To Rembrandt, a side aside of a big book about Baroque, which is, in my opinion, a pretty underrated um, era of art history. Um, just take uh, Rubens, for example, one of my favorite painters, um, who squeezed in more figures in one panel or on one canvas, like uh, even some. Um, comic artists uh, would do. So, um, yeah, lots of um, German expressionism here, Max Beckmann. Another favorite painter of mine is Max Ernst. Here we have some stuff by him. And um, he did uh, comics or um, sequen uh, um, sequential narrations um, made out of these um, prints, these etchings, and he collaged them. Uh, here you can see it on the left side, I guess, pretty well. So the surrealist trick to put different stuff that actually never had belonged together on one um, plane into one picture. Uh, 
So this method here works pretty well and works pretty well and effectively. Another guy who actually did a comic, who wouldn't think so, was oops, sorry, Pablo Picasso. And Dream, oh, this thing here I have to clean a bit. Um, Dream and Lies uh, by Franco or Fram Franco of Franco, uh, the uh, Spanish dictator in Spain. Spanish dictator in Spain, yeah. And here you can see a series of etchings and it's, it's a comic. Something to explore in a later video, I guess. Um, and the whole um, work process of Picasso, for me, it's like serial uh, storytelling in a very modern way, like you might maybe you will find in uh, these anthologies like now. But now I'm looking for my Pablo Picasso complete. Where's the complete problem? Okay, here you can see a bit more stuff. Paul Klee. I have lots, of lots and lots of stuff from Paul Klee. Uh, or about Paul Klee, because I really love him. He's more than this kitschy, nice kindergarten uh, decoration. <laughs> uh, really more worth uh, to his art, by far. And here we have Pablo Picasso. Um, and when you see, let's take part two here, it's two-part um, book by Taschen, which is actually, it's funny because Taschen uh, in German means pocket, but Taschen uh, since a long time, this year came out, I don't know when I, I guess I bought it when it came out, um, 1991. Um, so, since a long time, they produce books like this and they are nothing like uh, pocket books. But, yeah. Um, what I wanted to show you is uh, this serial storytelling that um, eludes you when you visit a museum and uh, see just one picture by uh, Picasso. And this is maybe an example here how he, you can see it here actually on, on almost uh, every double page, um, how he painted pictures in a series and uh, changed slightly his perspective and um, the, yeah, his subject, here, yeah, Ganika on the cover. Um, so, I think there is some serial um, aspect to his, his work. In case if you have asked yourself what are these books on top of the shelf here, uh, these are Kunstforum. Uh, it's a magazine in, in book size or book format that I subscribed to for a long time as you can see. Uh, I stopped subscribing to them because uh, I had comics to read. <laughs> Um, but uh, seriously, I read a lot of the stuff here. Um, they have really surreal, strange uh, subjects here, for an example. Um, art and sport, even two volumes to that. Trash art, theory of garbage, uh, art and war, the magic, one and two. What is art? Okay, this is actually... Um, a book that could, uh, could be expanded over 10 books or a do dozen books. Uh, even more Paul Klee here. Edward Munch, wonderful uh, book with his graphic, his prints. Dali, as I said, it's uh, like the internet uh, printed out when you type in fine art, uh, you will find it here. Aside of many German artists like Baselitz or um, Wolfgang Matheurer and Karl Marx, who's 
obviously not that Karl Marx, but a different guy. Um, I, and Gerhard Richter here and Immendorf. The order here is really not very far from perfect. Horst Janssen, who is an amazing draughtsman. Here's um, more Gerhard Richter, um, who is maybe most famous, uh, at least for Sonic Youth fans, because uh, Sonic Youth used one of his paintings for Data Rim Nation as a cover picture. Besides all these painters, to finish my sentence from two minutes ago, uh, I have a real love, a deep love and at least interest for American Expressionist painters like Robert Motherwell. Um, another of my favorite painters, actually. Along with a lesser known, but in my book, in my opinion, a fantastic painter who uh, bridges uh, in a very elegant and logic way um, the gap between realistic expressionism and abstract expressionism. And uh, side formally, of course, Barnett Newman, Mark Rothko, Franz Klein, Robert Rauschenberg. And here's one guy um, that I really have to look into his work in a separate video because yeah, he has some um, relationship with comics um, because he used some cartoony uh, depiction or ways of depiction for his, some of his um, pictures, his paintings. And, but, but his art takes a time to get used to it. That's actually um, a characteristic, I think, of art that is worth looking at uh, when you have to think about it a while. A lot of these artists here and paintings, I thought really less before. And uh, to be honest with you, I didn't get it, uh, got it at all. But after a while, I. And sometimes it's uh, the other way around. Marc Chagall, uh, I loved Marc Chagall as a, as a young boy, and now I think, okay, all these flying angels and rabbi, rabbis, uh, um, still nice, but not as, excite, as, as exciting as it was once. So, um, yeah, but I don't want to overstay my welcome here. <laughs> Just give you some kind of um, update on my personal projects here. And this, uh, believe me, this took here a while uh, during the holidays, uh, along slipcase making and, uh, <laughs> and whatever uh, you can do to waste your time. Don't waste your time. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.